is here, not our guest, but our host, I should say. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you all very much. No. No. Please. Well, thank you all very much. And uh, welcome to the White House. You know, I always feel a little odd when I stand over here in the EEOB building and uh, say welcome to the White House. But evidently, that's kind of uh, considered the same thing here. So. Uh, I've never tried sleeping here, but, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I know you've had others talking to you, and you've had some briefings here today. Has anyone told you about the figures released at 8.30 this morning by the Commerce Department? They haven't? Goody. <laughs> Personal income, up in January to 1.1 percent. It's been nine-tenths of 1 percent for the last three months until January. Disposable income up the same figure, and consumption expenditures up 1.2% uh, in January. Also, housing starts in January, 1.9 million. That's almost 15, 14.9% above December, and it's the highest level since December of 1978. And uh, housing permits are 14.4% above the December figure for January for new construction. Well. That's probably better than anything else I've got to say. Well, I know how much Ed Pratt and your organization have done to promote free and fair trade, and believe me, we'll need your help this year if America is to meet her trade challenge for the 80s. You appreciate more than most what's at stake a nearly $2 trillion market abroad, the chance to create hundreds of thousands of jobs, more income security for people, and greater freedom and security for our country. Now, some who fear the future would in, uh, invoke protectionism, uh, I think that would be a, a terrible mistake. Trying to protect domestic jobs with high tariffs, quotas, and subsidies will kill more jobs than it saves. It'll raise prices and reduce sales because other countries will retaliate. And protecting a few industries at home will only shield them from modernizing their plant and equipment, which they must do if they expect to compete in world markets. The great English historian Thomas Babington Macaulay wrote more than a century ago that free trade is one of the greatest blessings a government can confer on a people. But he said, it's unpopular in almost every country. Well, for some, times haven't changed. As you know, there's a hue and cry for us to bend to protectionist measures, and we must resist it. I've been around long enough to remember that when we did that once before in this century, something called Smoot-Hawley, we lived through a nightmare, the Great Depression of the 1930s. World trade fell by 60 percent, contributing to that depression and to the political turmoil that led to World War II. We and our trading partners are in the same boat, and we have to remember that if one partner shoots a hole in the bottom of the boat, it doesn't make much sense for the other partner to shoot another hole. Some people say doing that is getting tough, I think it's just getting wet all over. <laughs> we must plug the holes in the boat of open markets and free trade and set sail toward prosperity. No one should mistake our determination to use our full power and influence to prevent anyone, in from, anyone from destroying the boat and sinking us all. There's a fundamental difference between positive support of legitimate American interests and rights in world trade and the negative actions of protectionists. Free trade can only survive if all the parties play by the same rules. We're determined to ensure equity in our markets, but defending workers in industries from unfair and predatory trade practices is not protectionism. It's legitimate action under U.S. and international law. 
Now, one example of protectionist legislation that could quickly sabotage recovery, however, is the local content rule. It should be renamed the Jobs Destruction Bill. We can't allow that kind of pull-up-the-drawbridge mentality to destroy the progress that we've made. So I just hope that you'll do everything you can to help us defeat it and every bill like it. Americans can be optimistic about our future if we build on our strengths. We have tremendous resources and knowledge in science, agriculture, and high technology. I don't know how many of you stop to consider this, but our challenge of building a permanently manned space station within the next decade, we think, can open up an entire new industry for space-based, or industries in the plural, for space-based entrepreneurs. There's a whole new world of exports in products and activities related to space just waiting to be developed. For example, there are metal alloys and life-saving medicines that may be produced only in a space-based environment. We're in a position of leadership, and I intend to make sure we do everything we can to retain it and to build on it. And that's why I've asked Transportation Secretary Elizabeth Dole to help stimulate private sector investment in commercial unmanned space boosters. We need a thriving commercial launch industry. And NASA, along with other departments and agencies, will be taking several initiatives to promote private sector investment so we can keep our lead over foreign competitors. The answer to our export challenge is not raising taxes, which would harm investment, productivity, and growth, and it's not undermining confidence in the value of the dollar, which would reignite inflation and make us less competitive. The answer is promoting more free and open trading markets throughout the world, giving people incentives, and telling government either cooperate or get out of the way. Now, one example of government cooperation we favor is the Export Trading Company Act. I know your strong support helped insurance passage, and we thank you for that. This is the kind of innovative idea that is based on teamwork that can expand exports, increase growth, lower deficits, and spark new jobs and opportunities for our people. We're also very grateful for your support in the passage of the Caribbean Basin Initiative. The spirit of that legislation is friends helping friends. It'll be a collective partnership for peace, prosperity, and democracy in the Caribbean and in Central America. A partnership born of our shared vision that democracy is a God-given birthright, and that faith, freedom, and respect for the dignity of every citizen are the mainsprings of human progress. America's greatest progress has always been made when we had the first the faith to believe in our vision, energy, and the spirit of our people. Our message to the world should be straightforward. We conquer fear with faith. We overcome poverty with growth, and we counter violence with opportunity and freedom. And that's what we're trying very hard to do. Our principles have never failed us when we had the courage to live up to them. And I can't leave you now without telling a little story here. I hope it hasn't gotten to you yet, but mentioning the Caribbean Basin Initiative has reminded me of it. Our recent experience in Grenada, and incidentally, speaking of entrepreneurship, they have a t-shirt down there. One has been delivered to me. Uh, those t-shirts are going like hotcakes, and they're a t-shirt with the crossed flags of Grenada in the United States and a line underneath that says, thank you for saving Grenada. Uh, the I thank our country, America, for saving Grenada. But this has to do with the story. It's a true story. A young Marine lieutenant flying a Cobra was down there in the Grenada uh, rescue mission, and then he went on over to Beirut. And after getting to Beirut, he sent back a message to the Armed Forces Journal in the Pentagon. He said that he noted that every news story about Negreta, uh, Grenada, day after day, every news story had one line in it. The same, always. It said Grenada produces more nutmeg than any other spot on Earth. And he decided that the constant repetition of that line must be a code. <laughs> and he had broken the code in six points that he sent back to the Armed Forces Journal. Number one, Grenada does produce more nutmeg than any other spot on Earth. Number two, the Soviets and Cubans are trying to take Grenada. Number three, you can't make good eggnog without nutmeg. <laughs> 
Number four, you can't have Christmas without eggnog. Number five, the Soviets and Cubans are trying to steal Christmas. <laughs> and number six, we stopped them. <laughs> Well, thank you all again for all that you're doing, and God bless you all.